thank you for coming and allowing me to summarize the last four days of our discussions with the school. I think uh, you all know from my first lecture that I'm interested in a particular set of problems which cut across the capabilities of the distinguished departments at this university and which, in my opinion, no one of them can resolve. It's clear that for serious societal and environmental issues, designing for change cannot be a solitary activity. Rather, it's inevitably a collaborative endeavor with participations, participants from various design professions and geographic sciences, linked by technology from several locations for rapid communication and feedback, and reliant on transparent communication with the people of the place who are also direct participants. Geodesign is an invented word and a very useful term to describe a collaborative activity that is not the exclusive territory of any design profession, geographic science, or information technology. Each participant must know and be able to contribute something that the others cannot or do not. Yet during the process, and I emphasize, no one need lose his or her professional, scientific, or personal identity. These problems, which cut across size, scale, and theme, share six questions. How should the context be described? How does the context function? Is the context working well? How might the context be altered? What differences might the proposed changes cause? And what should be done? How should the context be changed? They're organized in my mind, and in a book that, as you know, I've recently written, into a framework, a framework for geodesign. The first question is answered by representation models. These are data, and they could be any kind of data. The second question, how does the context operate? These are process models, and they represent the knowledge that we have about how our environment works. The third question, is the current context working well? These are evaluation models, and they depend on the values of the people of the place. And those vary by culture, geography, time, attitude, social class, and all kinds of reasons. And political consensus is one of the objectives. The fourth question, how might the context be changed? These are change models. These are ways of proposing what the future might be like, and with the purpose of improving the present conditions. But they are data. They are descriptions of a new environment. The fifth question, what differences might the changes cause? These are impact models. And they are knowledge, forecast knowledge, of how these environments that we have are going to change in the future if we make a particular set of changes. And finally, how should the context be changed? These are decision models. These are the ways that governments, corporations, individuals make decisions and they depend on the values of those people and institutions. The process typically would begin with a group of people saying, we've got a problem, let's try to make things better. And they ask a group of other people, in orange, design professionals, in green, information technologists, and blue, scientists, to help them with that problem, to help them with that problem, not to decide what to do, but to help them decide what to do. The first phase is trying to understand what's going on. These are the why questions. Why are we here? What are we doing? And what you're really trying to do is understand the values, knowledge, and data of the place. How do the people think? How do they make decisions? What's important to them? What do they know? What don't they know? What do they fear? The second phase is the how. How is the group assembled to attack this set of problems going to work together? How are we going to communicate? And what's important here is to realize that the decision models, the values of the decision process drive the system, not the data. In order to make a decision, you need to compare opportunities and alternatives. In order to compare them, you have to have them. In order to have them, you have to evaluate. 
the current situation in the same language that you're going to decide. In order to compare them, you're going to have to have process models that allow you to compare them. And finally, you're going to have to have data. The third stage is the what, where, and when. What, where, and when are we going to do? And it really follows through two processes. The use of data, knowledge, and values in assessment, and the use of data, knowledge, and values in intervention. And it's the intervention that we're here for. And something will go wrong. And we have to be able to feed back into any of these levels of work. Any of these models can be the subject of feedback. And you may have to change scale. And if you change scale, the exact same questions occur. But the answers, the models, change. And eventually, you say to yourself, yes, I think we've done what we can do. Let's pass this back to the decision process. And there, we rely on the values of these people to decide, and we hope they decide yes. This is never a linear process.